Hey, Chris, welcome to Paper Napkin Wisdom. I'm thrilled you joined me here today. Govind, it's such a pleasure to be a part of this. I've known about it for a little while and um, heard a couple of them in the past with friends of mine, and it was honored, an honor to be reached out to. So thank you. It's nice to be here. That's great. So, so uh, you know, for, for anybody who knows you, I think your paper napkin contains a phrase that really describes you really well. But I'm going to ask you to share it uh, out loud and maybe describe your napkin to everyone listening. So it's, I end everything by saying giddy up. Um, um, giddy up. And these days it's giddy up and make it happen. Um, my son, I have an 11-year-old son who, who believes that every time he sees the word giddy up or hears the word giddy up these days, says to me, Daddy, somebody owes you a quarter. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I'll have to make sure that I take a collection because I think I've been saying it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever. If, if, if the message moves on in the, in the right direction to somebody else, um, I didn't make it up myself. I took it from, uh, from, from a, a coach of mine who was training me on a bike, getting ready for a race. And it was a phrase she used that inspired me to just step on it a little bit. And I, it's been coming out of my mouth ever since. That's great. So, so that's where it came from. And what has it done for you? What, you know, why did you choose that to be your paper napkin to share with me here? And given that the audience is you know, entrepreneurs, leaders, and difference makers. Um, I think for a lot of different reasons. I, um, as a former member of entrepreneurs organization who went to a lot of events and listened to a lot of speakers and still a member of the gathering of Titans group, for, um, I, 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 um, I've seen a number of entrepreneurs who have this, the EO thirst for learning. And they just want to keep learning more and more and more, looking for that secret sauce. And I just, like one of these days, you're just going to actually have to step on the gas and go for it, people. Yeah, you know what? That, 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 is, that is so true. Because um, learning can be often an excuse to sit around. I mean, did that happen to you at some point where, where you, you, you know, you're sort of drinking from the fire hose and it's kind of intoxicating just to sit there and learn? Yeah, so I think probably around five or six years into EO, after going to a number of universities, after graduating from my EMP class, joining Gathering of Titans, um, I, I'm enamored. I, I didn't finish college. Uh, I went to a community college, and then I went to RIT for a little bit and never graduated. Um, got that entrepreneurial bug in me to go out there and start my own business, and uh, never, never really looked back. Never had a real job, thank God, working for anybody kind of always paved my own way. And, but I had gotten to this point in EO where I actually felt like I wasn't entrepreneurial anymore. I was in this like learning mode and protecting what was mine. It was post recession. So we had a lot of uh, negativity in our business that we were trying to um, pr um, um, protect, save what was left. And uh, we're a little gun shy about being as uh, as forward as we were once upon a time in the past while trying to absorb all of this content. And I, like, I, I just said, less learning, more doing. And then I was on a bike ride with somebody and we happened to, it was a new coach for the day and she screamed, get me up! And you knew exactly what she meant, which was go. Yeah, yeah. And I've embraced it um, in a lot of different ways in my life ever since. You know, physically, I, I grabbed hold of it. Like, I, I think I was 40 years old. I had a two-year-old and a four-year-old and realized these little monsters move around fast. And at 245 pounds with a size 40 waist, I'm having a hard time keeping up with them. Um, and they're only going to get faster. So I shed 45 pounds and got myself in Ironman shape and really from the premise of giddy up. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, in, in fact, you know, similar to my journey, I, I've lost a ton of weight. I think since the last time I saw you years ago in New Orleans, you know, I was almost 300, almost 400 pounds back then. Wow. And now down to 240 ish. Uh, and so I, I'm at the beginning point of your journey uh, now, and I, I've got I want to lose that other 40 pounds too, and, and do what you're doing. So, so 
think, think about this call to action, you know, the giddy up and make it happen. I, I, I think it's really important that people understand that learning is important, but applying the learning is more important, right? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, to uh, giddy up applied from a learning perspective, your comment to me was now I want to lose that other 40 pounds and get to that particular place. So to me, um, it's always about create that vision. What's, what does that look like? And if I can see it and I can feel it and I can taste it and I can smell it, at least I have a North star to keep myself moving in that direction. I get distracted here and there, but I know where I'm going to go. I see it and I write it down. Cameron Harold calls it, used to call it a painted picture and now calls it a vivid vision. And I've embraced that concept for a really, really, really long time. Um, but now I got a place to go. Now what? Now I got a whole bunch of strategies. And, and I think that, you know, and, and, and learning events oftentimes provide us with a whole bunch of strategies on how best to get there and to have this kind of board or to have this kind of financing or to have this kind of SEM or this kind of whatever. Um, and once in a while we get blessed with the presence of someone like Jack Daly who gives us a little, a little bit of motivation to apply some of that, but still our wheels, our wheels can be turning and my wheels have turned a, a many of times for long periods of time sitting there knowing where I wanted to go, knowing what I needed to do to get there and just not doing, I just sometimes get, have gotten stuck in the rut of not doing it. The moment I make that decision, everything changes. And stuff gets accomplished at an exponential rate faster than I, you see anyone around me doing it. So let's, let's talk about that moment, right? Let's talk about what goes into that moment. And, and you as an entrepreneur and, and now as a coach, right? I mean, you, you've got a company, K2 Coaching. You, yes. you coach entrepreneurs and, and leadership teams. So when you think about that, think about that moment, it really, for a lot of us in, in that leadership role, we get enthralled with the sexiness of strategy. I mean, it feels very sexy to be talking about strategic things. And, and we forget that, that tactics are a piece of strategy. It, you know, strategy without execution is just a dream. It's a hallucination. Yeah. Um, and and, and um, my favorite is Drucker's that um, 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 culture eats strategy for breakfast. So I am um, in my EO qualifying business, which is Chris and Company. It's a manufacturer's rep agency in the gift space. I've, I've seen other agencies go out there and during trade shows approach vendors and talk to vendors about helping them with their branding and helping them with their marketing and their strategic plan for the next 12 months. And vendors will come to us and say, you know, what's your, what's your strategic plan for the next 12 months? And um, now we've been doing this for 20 years. We're one of the leaders in our cat in, in the, in the category that we represent have built a fine organization um, and still do it on the premise that we make great retail more funner. That's my strategy. I make things more funner. That's awesome. That's my strategy. And if it doesn't fit through that filter, then it has no purpose. So we, um, we've, we've found ourselves in, 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 in our own business realizing that those best strategies of some of the bigger firms, um, when it comes to actually executing on that, they don't have a team that's aligned to the strategy. They don't have a team that's aligned to their culture. They don't have, you know, they've got lots of accountability and micromanagement and lots of top heaviness with, with brains galore and MBAs, you know, popping out left and right. But when it comes to having the day-to-day -day troops out there executing on it, they often fail miserably. Now, we fail miserably as well once in a while, um, but we've seen some of them they are more miserably and that we see that happen now as a coach I see that happen all the time uh, we you know we, we have a vision we know where we want to go we have the best strategy but we're not executing on it why because um, they're not as aligned as everyone else is and don't have that 
like get out of bed in the morning driving purpose that tells them, get up, let's go. Time to make this shit happen. Yeah, so, so think about that jumpstart moment, right? Because I think that's so, what you yeah. just talked about, I, I love the way you talked about how they've got lots of accountability, lots of micromanagement, but really no action, nothing really happening, no real alignment. And, and I, I, you know, that, I, I love that culture each strategy for breakfast. I, I think I say that uh, as often as I possibly can, squeeze it into a sentence because it's yeah. such a powerful statement. So think about, but think about what happens, right? Well, think about, because this gets me fired up. When you've got this accountable, micromanaging culture that is throttling, really, like it's, it's really bringing down and suff- suffocating action to people taking action and actually getting up out there. How do you change that? Like when you see that happening in your team, what's, what's, what's a couple things that we can do to change that? Um, I, yeah, I, I think within our, within your own team, um, it really comes back to the foundation of the business. Do we have a clear purpose? Can everyone articulate it? And if not, that's at least a starting point. And oftentimes we're finding very successful $5 million a year revenue companies who've been doing it for 10, 15, 20 plus years. No clue. No clue. No clue why they do what they do. And they're just but going they, through the motions. But, right? they, they're just but, they're, but, but they're good at what they, you know, they're good at what they do. They're not great. And they're certainly not outstanding, but good. Now I'm writing a book um, on, 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 um, Right now, the current working title is Fuck Mediocrity. We'll see if that sticks. Um, that really speaks to these terms, like five, a $3 million business in, in EO standards is good. It's actually middle of the road. You take any chapter of EO and look at it, look, look at it on, 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 a, on a graph. The number one guy does a million dollars, or at least he should be doing a million dollars. Or he's got a really friendly accountant. You know who you are. And then there's this top guy there who does like $350 million. And they have the wherewithal to, to, to advertise that their average is 15. Well, top heavy usually because the next guy does 50, the next guy does 20, and the next guy after that struggling to do 10. So the five top guys are making a whole lot. And then you've got this long stream. It kind of looks like a ho- if you took a hockey stick and laid it out in front of you, that's what it looks like and tilted it up just ever so slightly to, on the right-hand side. Um, I be- my contention in this book is that there's a whole lot of mediocrity going on from number two to number 95. And, but we're good at what we do. We're the leaders. We're the top 4% of businesses. How dare you say we're mediocre? Or we're mediocre amongst our peers. We've accepted that this way of doing business, of just, I call it sometimes stumbling forward, learning a little bit, trying a little something new, is good enough. It's working. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, love, I love the way that you've talked about this in the sense that because – there's, there's a stat that said that long ago, there was a stat saying that 85% of companies didn't make it past three years. <clears throat> well, now that number's really dropped. That it's, it's only 45% of companies don't make it past three years. But still, companies aren't growing. Companies have almost stopped growing at a rate that it used to be uh, seen as being average. I mean, an average small company growth was seen to be a minimum of 10%. Now we're talking about 10% as being you know, stratospheric growth. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 you know, yeah. 10% growth is, is our, is people's goal. Whereas, you know, people were looking at doubling their companies, were tripling their companies and now they just hold it on. Have people just forgot to move forward? I mean, is it, is it become a stumble thing? Is that what you're seeing? Um, I think that people tell themselves a lot of funny stories and they believe them. You know, you can shut your eyes and 
tell and, 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 and tell yourself that this piece of paper is blue. This piece of paper is blue. And if I shut my eyes hard enough and tell myself that long enough, I will visualize a blue piece of paper. The brain does not know the difference between reality and that which we tell it. We've got plenty of internet and news and, 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 other, and, and mediocre players out there complaining about why it's not happening for them. Um, so I started this coaching business about three years ago, and I was having a conversation with somebody in my industry. Now, I've, I've coached mostly outside of my industry. I wanted to try something new and different after running a company for 17 years at that particular time, and thought it'd be fun to just be on the other side. We use gazelles, we use Rockefeller Habits to scale Chris and Company to over $10 million, and decided let's see if we could be the coach, go to the other side and help somebody else do that. Um, the first conversation I had with somebody was, what if we did a little bit less business, but we were much better, we were outstanding at it. And they looked at me like I was batshit crazy. Now, I was talking about their top line revenue. I wasn't talking about the, their culture and everyone's general happiness. I wasn't talking about their EBITDA. I wasn't talking about their gross margins. I wasn't talking about um, their bottom line profit. But my intentions were to grow all of those other things by shrink by possibly shrinking one. And um, so it doesn't always have to be about growth per se. Yeah. If we're just using revenue as the, as the means to, to, to measuring that. But I, I think these days, more importantly, culture, um, um, how lean we are, how much, how much fun we're having at it, and, and how good we're at it, and how pleased at what our NPS score is with our customers, and how good of a job the world thinks we're doing. What's neat for me is, is even when you're talking about anything else, for you, you're almost bringing it back. That you, you talked about clear purpose being the foundation of it. And when you talked about your company, Chris and Co, you talked about, you know, being more funner, right? You, you talked about how making things more funner and, and, and that being a great filter for you, it, it's, it's, it's like it pervades almost everything you're saying. And I, and I think that that's, I mean, if we think about that as an entrepreneur, if we think about it from that perspective and that's the focus that we take when we're, when we're, making it happen when we, when, you know, when we were going up that hill and we're getting up. Isn't that what it's all about? Like having that focus, having that really clear sense of purpose and then having a filter in place to be able to say, Hey, you know, I don't need to grow in every direction. I need to grow in that direction. Right. So we've, you know, we've, we've, that it's, all, it's about that foundation for me. It's it. So on top of the purpose, it's really the, our core values that exist within, within the organization at Chris and company, it's reps. Um, real relationships, uh, um, everything entrepreneurial, um, uh, empower, empowered entrepreneurialism, and um, passion for the products that we represent, and simple solutions. You know, that, and that simple solutions we were talking about earlier where other agencies will go to a vendor that they want to represent and just talk about this, 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 and this. And we have one driving purpose at Chris and Company as far as simple solutions is concerned. I want to be the number one, number two, or number three rep agency for you in the country, simple. And if I can't, I'm not doing my job right, or you're not, or something's not working. But that's that's all I'm shooting for. Number one, number two, number three, nothing else. That's our that, that's our strategy. People hate it, but when we execute on it, they think we're God's gift to the world. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. of the 20 vendors that we represent, we're we're there with a, a large majority of them when we really shouldn't be. But that's what we set as a goal. If we set a number goal, we probably would hit that number goal. But I said, why not just be number one? It's not possible because the South is bigger than us. Well, who cares? Yeah. It can happen. What's it going to take? What's the difference? What's the spread? What's that going to look? What's that look like? And, and drill it down, down, dr drill it down, drill it down, drill it down, drill it down to, okay, that means I mean, I have to make three phone calls a day instead of two phone calls a day. Now and that's the make it happen piece, right? That's, that's the giddy up and make it happen. Reverse Absolutely. engineering it, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot in that. There's a lot into giddy up. 
that, you know, it's, it's my oversimplification, which I have a tendency to do and drives my wife crazy and drives those around me crazy. It can't be that simple, Chris. Five questions I can ask. Is it more funner? And does it filter through each of my four core values? I can decide whether you're the right customer, whether you're the right vendor, whether this is the right thing, whether this is the right strategy to go down by those five. Now, it doesn't mean I can't go against those. And I think we do all the time. I just happen to know ahead of time what to expect. Yeah, and, and, and what, what do you expect when you go against those? Um, well, so if simple solutions is my core value and somebody's got a complex way of doing things, I at least know monthly or quarterly or yearly or however often, we're going to have a convoluted, crazy, long conversation that I'm never going to be prepped for. <laughs> yeah. As long as I'm number one in the country, I can just stand there and look and put a big shitty and grin on my, on, on, on my face. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So it doesn't mean I can't work with you if you're not. So if you don't, if you don't believe in real relationships, you just want sales. You just want me to go sell your widgets to all the retailers in the greater Northeast. And that's all that you care about. And you're going to, you're going to sell a truckload. You're going to send me a truckload of money. At least I know where our relationship stands. And there's but no surprise. I'm going right? to go there, but if I do, at least I know, you know, Coven and I, we're never going to break bread together. Yeah. And, that's all, you know. and that helps you focus too, right? I mean, really, it's all about creating that sense of focus, that overriding sense of focus that, that we as the leader – can rally our teams around and, and lead our teams toward because it's our actions that lead. It's not just our words, right? Right. So the earlier question and, and I working with clients on this one is when the team is not executing well, it has a tendency to come back to, um, are they, are, are they, are they aligned to the purpose of this company? So I was working with a retailer not too long ago and one of the department managers really wants, you know, like to hit her numbers every single day for sales within that department. And the true purpose of the company itself was to educate, entertain, and inspire. And my contention was, if you were focused on entertaining, educating, and inspiring people only and never selling them, you'd outsell every department in the store, hands down, every single day. My job is not to sell this widget. My, my job is to, to entertain you with it. My job is to educate you about it my, and ultimately to inspire you to buy it. Right down to the core purpose. Yeah. And I think that um, that's true of many sales organizations that um, and, and sales reps that are out there that want to hit their goals, want to hit their number. You know, they have a goal because they've got a mortgage. They've got a college education to pay for. They've got a wedding coming up. They've got something going on, and it's about the money. But I contend it's not about the money. It's about the original purpose of doing the whole thing in the first place, which probably for them has to do with some sort of feeling change. Yeah. You know what's really so cool, Chris? Is going a positive or avoiding a negative. What's what's really cool about this is when you started talking about creating that department that, that you know that that was about educating, inspiring, and really getting pumped up about the widget, um, and and educating and inspiring the audience and the crowd that came into that place. I could see you get fired up. I could I could see the light come on. I could see that happen, and the momentum just flowed out of you in that moment. You know there there are a lot of people who are listening and they're saying you know hey. Chris, he's got a he's got a ten million dollar company. He's been doing this for years. He's just got this coaching thing, and and you know he doesn't know my problems. He doesn't get that I, I'm beaten down, and I've tried all that stuff. All right, so we'll go for full disclosure here on the ten million dollar number at Chris and Company. It's a sales number. There's a commissions to it. I qualify for EO, but I don't have ten million bucks in the bank. Right. I'm going to level, I'll level the playing field a little bit on, on that one. And I said earlier, we tell ourselves stories. 
and they get we get caught up in them and and then we find somebody who has the same story god forbid <laughs> and you know they just and 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 they, they 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 make us feel warm and comfortable while sucking us down you know like oh yes it's just you know like it's easy for that person if they've got a $10 million company or he just sold his company for a hundred million dollars or blah, blah, like everyone's got the same challenges every single day. So, you know, and there's no dollars in any of my principle in, in the purpose or the values. There's none. Executing on those on a daily, regular basis builds amazing results. And so every time we've been able to work with a company who's struggled who, companies that have been humming along for a little while. It, it's been fun working with great with brand new companies because you get to design them out of the box. Yeah, it's, yeah. You just pick awesome, awesome core values that the that the founder and his partner have, and woof, off you go and hire to those and fire to those and make decisions based on those. But when you've got these companies that have existed for a while, trying to dig deep and find that to give them some compelling reason to giddy up a little bit becomes a little bit harder. But when it happens, there's this magic that appears and they, they get it because now it's uh, simple. Yes. Easy. Yes. Yeah. And um, no one said it. No, it's not easy. Though. No one said it. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not a secret sauce. It's not that, that new strategy that's just going to yield ridiculously over overnight positive results to your bottom line. Um, but 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, it takes 18 months to fill up to, to complete a one page plan. Well, in a business, 18 months, most entrepreneurs go to a Vern Harnish session and think they can get it in two days. You're freaking nuts people. Yeah. It's, constant and never-ending improvement with systems and processes that are that take time to develop and get used to and filter down to the masses you know one of the one of the beautiful things about what you just said is this 18 month process and people are going to say oh man i've got these problems right now uh and the thing for people to get out of your napkin you know giddy up i think is that that yeah the, the best time to start this may have been 18 months ago the second best time is right freaking now. So I have a, um, the other sentence that I use a lot is when is now a good time? <laughs> when is now a good time? When is now a good time? Um, not someday. Um, regardless of whatever avenue, if we've got a whole bunch of problems that are like facing us and I, I get that people do um, um, across the board, whether it's a people problem, whether it's a strategy problem, whether they can't make payroll. But I, like, I, I get it. I get it. I've been there. I've had a hard time making payroll myself over the years. It's not fun. Um, I, I've, had, I've had a hard time. Um, 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 keep, um, I, I haven't had a hard time keeping great people at Chris and Company. I've been very fortunate there, and I think it's probably because I just hired nice people. But people don't leave us. We've got, you know, we've been around for set 19 years now, and I think two or three of my people have been here for 15 plus years. That's which, amazing. Which in the gift retail sales industry is off the charts. Um, I get that, but no matter what you do, you're still going to have those problems. They're going to exist. They're not going to go away overnight, unless your uncle Bob wins the lottery. <laughs> yeah, wants, you know, and, 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 and wants to give you all the money yeah, and wants to give it to you. But then you're, then you're just going to have a lot of debt. Yeah. Right. All the other stuff's still going to get there. And what got you there um, is probably going to repeat itself. History has a tendency to do that until we try something new and different. We've picked that vision. We set a bunch of a purpose to it. We set some values to it. We figure out what we need to do in three years, one year. And what we need to do in the next 90 days, what we need to do today, and we go. And the moment we make that decision, from the moment we make that decision, we're heading on a new course now. We own that new course. Now, we're, and we're going to make mistakes. Cool. Awesome. Learning opportunities, right? Yeah. Um, things are going to go wrong. 
most of which we could plan for. I was on a sales call meeting this morning with my sales reps and somebody had the nerve to tell me that it's 4th of July week and the Atlanta gift show is going on and that's why things are slow. And I'm like, well, I thought, then tell me your high is I'm going to the beach to relax for three days. That would have been a healthy solution to a problem that existed. Not on the cal- Fourth of July is on the calendar every year. I think it's yeah. a constant. Pretty much. <laughs> the Atlanta gift show has been on the calendar for at least 12 months. It's a, pretty much a constant. It's going to happen right after. We, we know it. History says i got 17, 19 years of data to prove it. What's the solution? Make that happen. Yeah. Make the solutions happen. And, yeah, so let's giddy up and make it happen. Hey, Chris, our time is up today. I'd love to have you back again. What do you think? Um, um, anytime, baby. Anytime. That's awesome, man. Thanks so much for doing this. Let me know when you're in Rochester and I'll meet you there possibly. <laughs> that sounds great. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, if you liked that episode, there's a ton more like it on iTunes. Just search Paper Napkin Wisdom. Go to papernapkinwisdom.com to find the blog and pictures of all of the paper napkins. Plus, you can also follow along on Facebook, find Paper Napkin Wisdom on Twitter at Wise Napkin. My name is Govan J. Robin. This is Paper Napkin Wisdom. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day.